Hi, it's Steve with Tea Quilts, and today I'm going to show you how I made the Star of the East block. I actually made this block with my AccuQuilt die cutting system, so I'll go meet you at the die cutting station. to work on a block. I have this studio die that cuts the kaleidoscope and I have not seen a whole lot of information about how to use it and so I've been doing a little bit of research looking in some block books to see what I could come up with and also searching the internet and I did not find a whole lot in either place but I thought that I would go ahead and make a block for this. I did see uh, entire quilts made out of Jess these two shapes and I thought that was pretty interesting as well but for right now we are going to just make a block and so let me show you the block that we're going to make and it is called star of the east if I'm not mistaken if I am I'll put it on the screen and I've seen other people calling this the St. Louis Star, but the St. Louis Star is a little bit different. So I guess it could be the St. Louis Star variation as well, if you want to name it that. But I'm going to stick with Star of the East. So on this, when I buy my dies, I do mark them up. <laughs> I uh, put the name of it because of how I'm storing it. When I put it on my shelf, it sticks out this way so I can see the name of it. I also put my initials on it in the event that I loan it to someone. And I have the cut size that I would like to, that this uh, die is. And then I also put on here what it works with. So it also works with the isosceles triangle, which is number 50222. And it also uses three inch finished half squares and half square triangles. So I have some of that here. And here I have my three and a half inch, three inch finished half square triangles die from studio and it's 50163. In doing some research for this block, I also found that the three inch finished quarter square triangle will also work. And I have that on a gold die. I do not have it on the studio. And it's 55704. All right, so we're going to start cutting. And I will say that the most complicated thing to cut is going to be the kaleidoscope. And so I'm not going to show you that one first. I'm actually going to do something else and then come back with this last. So the first thing we're going to cut just to sharpen up our cutting skills is we're going to cut our half square triangles. So let me get the fabric for those, which I am cutting these fabrics. And since this block here was an actual test block. I have now pulled my fabrics that I want to make. I'm going to cut for four blocks. And I am going to just show you how I am cutting my fabrics. For four blocks, I need four half square triangles in each block, but I'm going to use two different fabrics for them. So I would need a total of 16 half square triangles. So in each fabric, I only need eight. So therefore, this die will cut six half square triangles here. But what I'm going to do is only cover four of these shapes. And then I'm going to flip it back so that I'm only cutting eight of the shapes and not any more. Because I don't want any extras. So I'm just making sure that I'm covering that die line. If I lose a little bit here, it's okay. And then I am going to put on my top cutting 
plate and then I'm going to run that through the die cutter. And I'll just bring this back to this side so you can see. And before I lift them, I do rub things and then just slide off my mat. So sometimes when you cut, you may not get all of the pieces around. So I just be patient. Sometimes your dies need to be cleaned. I have used this three and a half inch half square triangle lots of times. So it's good and used and probably is in need of a good cleaning. And then now I have cut just the eight that I need. And I don't have any extras. I'm also going to keep my fabric in the event that I decide I want to make more blocks as well. So those are my half square triangles. I also need quarter square triangles and I have two different fabrics for that. And also because I'm cutting my go die on a studio system, I need to use my go adapter plate. Now I do have an adapter plate in a smaller size. Not quite sure where I put it at this point because I saw this one first, so I just decided to go ahead and use it. So let me pull this tray out a little bit more. And when you're using a go die on a studio cutting system, you actually use the studio mat. You do not use the go mat. So here I have my fabrics for my quarter square triangles. Now, even though when I'm cutting with a studio, I can cut 10 layers, but because I'm using a go die, that still limits me to only using cutting six layers. So I need quite a few of these. I need, let's see, eight in each block times four. So I need 32 of these squares. And I actually have two strip sets that are put together here. And so what I'm going to do is just put this on the die and fan fold it back and forth. So that's two layers. Now we're coming up to four. And then I'm going to fold back up for six. And so that's how many layers that I can actually cut at a time. And then we'll run that through. Okay, so this kind of slid a little bit here. Rub that off a little bit. Pull off my excess fabric. And now with that, I've cut 24 of my triangles. So we have 24 triangles and I'm now going to just use one piece of fabric. But I will go ahead now and just fan fold my next piece here. So I have 24. This is 28. And four more will be 32. So we'll have enough of this right here. To send that through. So again, we had 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So we have our quarter square on one fabric and we also need to repeat that with the other fabric that I have. 
which is this fabric here. And I have enough to cut two more squares off of this strip, so that's what I'll do. The last shape that I need is my actual kaleidoscopes and I'm using these two fabrics and I just wanted to show you how I actually place them on the board. Now remember with the studio die you can actually cut 10 shapes at once and I don't know how many of these I can actually cut because I've used scraps when I did my test block. So that's why I kind of have extra fabric when I was using making my half square triangles. You really only need one strip of fabric to make your half square triangles from each fabric. So I may have to cut more of these off camera. But normally what most people would do is you would just lay this on here this way. But I wanted to have my straighter grain going across the board that way. So I am actually going to lay my pieces across the board like so and then I'm just going to fan fold back and forth now I need another 32 of these but I do have two dies on here so I have six layers of fabric right now this is going to be eight and here is ten So that's 10 layers of fabric right there. Then I'm going to get my mat and just put it on top of the board and I'm going to just roll this through. So I am just going to lift this off and here I have my 10 pieces for each cut so this is actually 20 of them and I will just turn them around so that they're all in the same direction. I'm going to just cut off some of this excess fabric here I got. I will keep Uh, these half square triangles and make some half square triangles with this right here. So I'll put it to the side. And then I have this piece left that I can get one more cut out of. So we'll put this on the board. And I don't think we can get another cut because we're going to be short. But if I open this up, I've just got the two fabrics, so I'll end up, I have 20 over here, so that means I'll have 24. So I will have to cut another eight of these. 
see. Eight times four is 32. So yes, I need another eight of these that I've got to cut. So I need to actually press another strip set and cut it. And I will do that later. You don't need to see me do that on camera. I just wanted to show you how I actually cut these. And then I will be saving these trimmings for my friend who makes dog beds. And then I will repeat that with my, and then I will repeat that process with my other strip sets. And again, I have two strip sets here as well. Alright, so I have enough of this cut that I can start sewing the block, so I'll meet you in the sewing room. So we have cut our block, I cut the extra pieces that I was actually missing, and now we're ready to start piecing our block. So let me show you what I've done so far. Okay. So I am actually holding this camera so that I can show you my block on the design wall here. And I just wanted to show you the block. I always like to lay my blocks out before I start stitching. And then that way, I know exactly what my block is going to look like before I actually take my first stitch. And I do like my fabric combinations. And we're now going to go ahead and get started sewing our first block. All right, so I'm trying to angle the camera up into this first quadrant here. And we're actually going to piece our block that way. And so the first thing that I do when I first start is that I know that all of these pieces have quarter square triangles that they need to be sewn to. When you cut a quarter square triangle, this is your straight of grain here. So this is the actual bias edges. And so these two bias edges actually meet up to the bias edge of the half square triangle. So what I first want to do is I want to go ahead and sew my star points and the quarter square triangles together. So I'm going to do that on this piece as well as this piece here. So I have my two pieces here and I am going to sew these together. And remember that I have eight of these so what I'm going to do is line up my triangle so that it meets up here at the top of my kaleidoscope shape. So when you put it together, there will be like a little nick. I don't know if it's going to show up on this uh, camera 
or not but there's like a little nick over here that's not covered and then also at the bottom you have the exact same thing where there is a little nick that's not covered with fabric and don't worry about that we're just going to go ahead and sew one quarter inch seam So I am going to do that to all of my blue pieces. So I have one here on my machine. And I will continue to do that for all eight of them. And then when I get those done, I have found that pressing the seams open is a great thing here so I am going to go ahead and press this seam open so I'm just going to use my wooden iron my little press here and just press that seam open and then I will just put this back onto my design board and I do this like a couple of pieces at a time so that I can put them back into position so I don't lose track of where they actually go And then once I put that piece back, then I would go ahead and continue to do that for all eight of them. So I will do that and then I will come back. So I had my TV on while I was explaining this next part so I am going to do it one more time <laughs> when I sewed my blue pieces as you can see here I sewed with the triangle on the top for the purple when I flip this over I would have to turn this around and stitch from this edge in order to have my triangle on top but what I want to do is sew from this top edge because that's the most important point to line up. So I want to line up my point and I'm now going to sew with my kaleidoscope piece on top. And I'm going to do that for all eight of these triangles as well. And when I've done that, I will come back. So I have all of my pieces sewn with the quarter square triangles onto each kaleidoscope. Got the right one going all the way around so I don't have to worry about uh, switching anything out. I just sewed all of my blue ones first and then I sewed all of the ones with the purple. Second, press the seams all open. Now I, what I want to do is sew these into pairs. And so I want to take these two off and you can see by my seam pressing here that I want to match those seam allowances and then I want to sew this all the way down one quarter of an inch to the end and I want to do that for all eight pairs on the wall so I will do that and I will come right back Alright, so the next step is now we want to sew our eight 
units into fours. So I'm now going to flip each quadrant over like that and I'm going to sew and I'm going to do that for all four. And when I've done that and press my seams open, I will be right back. And I also forgot to tell you that I did press with an iron. I did press with my wooden iron first and then I went and pressed with a heated iron just to make everything lay nice and flat. So I will press with my wooden iron and I'm going to press with a heated iron and then I'll be right back. And also again, as I'm sewing these units together, I wanna make sure that the seam allowance for my half square triangles meet up and I also want to match the seams that are down here at the bottom. So I do wanna make sure that I'm matching things. Right, so we're back and I am steadily building up my quadrants and I'll just show you the back of one. So this is how it looks on the back side. Everything is laying nice and flat. And now I want to add a quarter square triangle to each side. Now on the quarter square triangles, you could have used the same fabric for all of them. But what I wanted to do was put four blocks together uh, in a two by two setting. And I wanted these fabrics, when the blocks meet up, to be opposite fabrics. So that in the middle of my two by two, this will have the fabric opposite and then the blue would be on this side of it and so that's kind of what I wanted for my blocks but if you wanted to you could most definitely make all of your corners the same fabric so I'm now going to go ahead and sew these half square triangles on and when you sew these on the half square triangles have this edge here and it just allows it to lay right along the edge there just perfect this is why I like die cutting and they just go from edge to edge and I'm going to sew those on all four I am also going to press my seams open at this juncture too and when I do all four of these I will be right back I'm back and I have my four quadrants here sewn together and um, I now just want to sew this just like you would any regular four patch block I'm gonna sew my top two quarter blocks together and then my bottom two quarter blocks together and I'll be right back. So now that I have my quarter sewn into half, now I'm going to go ahead and sew our last seam here across the center and we'll have our completed block. I'll be right back. All right guys, I forgot to mention that this is the only place where I use the pin in this project. I wanted to make sure that my center did not move in the other places when I've been matching my seams, I just match my seams and then I hold it while I sew so that it doesn't move. And then my seams have been matching up pretty good. So I have not been using pins, just using a pin on this final seam. So here is my completed block. I wanted to go in and give you a close up of my center. And if you're not happy with how your centerpiece look, you can always take like a one inch finished circle maybe and applique it around the center to cover up any mistakes you have there. But I am going to allow my blocks to be as is. I want my star to have the points down there. So just wanted to give you that option. So I'm going to go ahead and make four more blocks and I will probably come back and add on to this video on a day two as far as I won't be adding it on tonight <laughs> but it will be in the same video but I just want you to see how four blocks are going to look when they're pieced with the alternating half square triangles so before I show you my four blocks I just wanted to show you the back of the block to show you all of the seams pressed open I just measured my block and it measures somewhere around 10 and a half to say 10 and 5 eighths, something like that. So I started at 10 and I'm right here uh, at the 10 and a half. 
but up here it looks like I'm over by an eighth so down here I'm about ten and a half up here it looks like I'm over about an eighth so I'd say these blocks are probably ten and a half inches just wanted to show you the actual block so now I'm going to put it on the wall and show you the four blocks put together so here on the wall I have all four blocks put together and I just wanted to show you what happens in the center when you have two different opposing corners and I am now just going to go ahead and sew this into a larger four patch I'm just going to sew all four blocks together my print fabric which seems like a zinger here is where I pull some of my coloring from for this block and it's actually going to be my border so I'm hoping that when I add it to the border that it doesn't be as prominent of a zinger as it is currently so let's sew this into a four patch and I have put my border fabrics on the side I'm actually using the purple that's in here this is the same fabric I'm going to put about a one inch finished border I don't want this quilt to be too large I keep telling myself that as I'm making projects that they don't have to be large I have no reason to make every quilt a bed size quilt so I'm going to put about a one inch finished border and then maybe a three inch finished border and that will be all that I am doing with this particular quilt. So let me get started with sewing and I'll come back and show you the completed project. Just coming back real quick to show you that border number one has been placed on the quilt top. And just let me flatten that out a little bit. <laughs> so we're ready to add border number two, our final border. So here I am with my final project. It is 28 and 3 quarter inches by 28 and 3 quarter inches square. I did add, when I put my um, first border on, I added an uh, extra quarter of an inch. So instead of cutting my strips 10, no, 20 and a half, I actually cut them 20 and 3 quarter because I accounted for that 5 eighths of an inch that my block was over a little bit and I think that worked out very well. I'm really happy with this. It's not going to get quilted right now just because I got a quilt on my frame that I need to get off. I have to do some ripping and then I have three quilts that need to be quilted already in my possession for customers and then I also am getting three orders for three t-shirt quilts on Friday so I don't know when it's going to get quilted but I did want this top to be completed and ready for quilting I am so so happy with this and just enjoyed this whole process and I hope that you did too if you if you make one please let me know share it in my Facebook group um, other tips that I have for this block now that I have completely sewn it together when I sewed these sections here where the triangle meets the half square triangle maybe it might be a great idea to press towards the triangle instead of pressing your seam open that way you'll have less bulk here when you're actually combining these blocks together so very bulky seams they're nice and flat I pressed them really good but that would be one thing that I would do uh, this video is so so long by now and I did want to add some photos or talk about some other blocks that you could also make with this die. But I think what I'm going to do is just do another video. Maybe I'll create another block and then I'll talk about a couple of the other things that I found that you could do um, as well. But I want to add a block where you're using the actual isosceles triangle in this you know with this kaleidoscope die because that's how they actually sell it to you is to buy the kaleidoscope uh, piece that's in this quilt and then add the isosceles triangle so I will do that in another video so thank you all so much for watching I will see you next time bye bye everyone stay safe stay blessed and quilt out thank you all so much for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe 
share my channel with your other quilting friends and i'll see you in my next video bye bye t quilters stay blessed Thank you.